Welcome, everybody. This is Steve Winward, and today we have Judd Gravel with us, and he's going to be telling us about a new feature that's coming to easily integrate access with the Power Platform. Welcome, Judd. Hey, good morning, everybody. And how are you doing today? I am hanging in there. Excited to be here. Thanks. <laughs> good, good, good. So tell us a little bit about this new feature. It sounds pretty interesting, but I'd like to hear more about it. Yeah, so th this is absolutely fantastic. Um, you know, and I'm not sure how many folks watching this will be deep power apps folks or deep access folks. I'll try not to assume either. Um, but the short story is there is some exciting new integration uh, coming between access and power platform. And um, today we're going to take a quick look at what exactly that means and how you might be able to use this integration um, to leverage what, some of what you're doing in access today in the cloud and in power platform in the future. That sounds awesome. And then a follow-up question I have for that is that, will this be something that works in our US sovereign clouds as well, like GCC, for example? It, it absolutely will be. And in fact, the demo I'm going to do later on today is going to be using a uh, you know GCC Windows 10 desktop that's connected to our GCC Power Platform cloud. So everything's actually in there and running today. But short answer, yes, we're expecting full parity uh, with uh, GCC and all of the rest of our environments. Awesome. Love it. Yeah. All right, so why don't we get started? Let's go ahead and see see what this looks like in action. All right, awesome. So we're right here uh, within Access. Hopefully, everybody recognizes Access. Um, and what we're going to show you essentially is how you can take an Access database and move essentially the back end of this database to Dataverse. And there's a lot of reasons you might want to do that. You might want to you know uh, secure your data a little better. You've got data living in Access databases all around the network, maybe. Uh, maybe you, you need this data uh, in other applications. You'd like to share this with other folks and it's kind of stuck in a, in a, um, uh, it's, it's kind of stuck in a silo on someone's desktop. So for the demonstration, what I'm going to do is take this database and migrate one of the tables in this database to Dataverse. And we'll show you how that, how this uh, process works. And when we finish the process, we're going to be left with still a fully functioning access database. It's just that the backend data is now going to be living in and secured by and governed by uh, Dataverse. So let's let's take a look at at, at um, and just quick, Go ahead, quick question, Judd. So yeah, yeah. with what you're showing here, I, I think I understand this, but is Access running locally on this machine right now? Yeah, so that's a great point. Yep, yeah, this is running locally on my machine, and this kind of demonstrates the problem. I've got this lovely database on my desktop, right, with all this <laughs> okay. valuable yep, data yep. in it. Not that uh, we've ever yeah. done that before. No one's ever done that before. Put it on a network drive and uh, and all that. But no, that's exactly what we're doing. We're taking a kind of locally stored database on my desktop that's in its own little silo, and we're now going to make that available to uh, other folks on Dataverse. Okay, awesome. Thanks for the clarification. Sure. So the, the process is actually really simple, and if you if you you know used Access uh, frequently in the past, you'll be completely familiar with um, with the process. All I really have to do to do this um, is start by highlighting the table that I want to move to Dataverse. In this case, I'm going to move a table called Locations. Uh, it's only got five rows here just for demonstration. Um, and you know, as you know with Access, this table is sort of the basis for a bunch of queries, a bunch of forms, a bunch of reports. Um, and we don't want to mess any of that up, right? We just wanted this data to end up in Dataverse. So again, to do that, all we have to do is um, come up to our toolbar, connect to external data, and you'll see a new icon here on your ribbon for Dataverse. And this is where we're going to go to kick off this process of moving our, our data up into the cloud. So to kick that off, again, I just, just click Dataverse. It's going to ask me which tables um, I want to pull up to the cloud. You may not want to move all of the tables uh, in the database. There may be utility tables that aren't important, maybe just certain data that you need to expose to other applications. So you've got the ability to, to select as many or as few tables as you want. Um, I'm going to move this locations table. And before I do that, I'm going to close this because uh, it thinks I'm editing a record. Um, but I'm going to select that locations table. And then it's basically going to ask me, where do I want to put this database? Which Dataverse environment? If you're familiar with Power Platform, you know that environments are sort of like containerized sandboxes in the cloud. And I can choose any environment as the target for my uh, access export. In this case, I'm just picking this um, environment that I that I had picked previously before. I will pop over there real quickly just to show you. You know, no smoke and mirrors. This is the environment name. This is the actual environment in the Power Platform. So you can see that I'm selecting the tables area now, and I've, I'm filtered on custom tables. You can see I have no custom tables. This is kind of a, 
a blank environment that we're going to export our data into. And so what, it, what I really like here is this is GCC. If you look at the URL, it's a gov.us endpoint, which which is great. Yep, yep, absolutely. Again, everything you're seeing here should should be um, you know completely uh, uh, in, in parity with GCC and commercial. So yeah, we'll, we'll pump it right up into the into the GCC environment. So fantastic. So we've got our environment selected here. The area at the bottom of this form is really where some of the magic happens. And I can just kind of walk through a couple of the different options that you have when you're exporting um, your data to Dataverse. The, the first option here is really just to, to make things more convenient for you. It's very rare that you have a table that's not related to other tables. And oftentimes you want to pull um, not just a table, but anything else that it depends on. So you can very quickly, using this first option, um, see all the tables that are related to that locations table, and then also choose to import those as well. And we'll talk about this more probably later on, but you know the, the relationships that you, you set up between these tables will be reflected in your new Dataverse environment along with data types and things like that. There's a lot of magic that happens in the background. Um, but in, in any case, in this screen, you're able to you know, decide whether you'd like to just bring in this one location table or whether you'd like to bring in all the additional tables. This next uh, checkbox here is again where the second part of the magic happens. And what this means, link the Dataverse table, excuse me, link to the Dataverse table after importing is that we're going to take this data out of access. We're going to create a table up in Dataverse. We're going to put this data from access into that table in Dataverse. And then within the access database, we're going to now point out to Dataverse for our back end, meaning we're no longer going to be creating and storing database in that Microsoft Access database back end. We're going to be automatically linking and piping that data to the Dataverse. And that'll become real clear what's happened when we show it um, after the demonstration. Uh, but the end result of this is you'll have a fully functioning Access database just with that um, database living up in the cloud and power platform. So we'll see, we'll see. Yep, go ahead. And just really quickly on yeah. that. So does this then give them the flexibility to say that we want to move our stuff, for example, from your desktop to Power Platform, but they can kind of do it in phases if they wanted to do that? That's that's exactly correct. You know, you've you've got the ability now to move that data into a more securable, more governable, more governable, more shareable environment, but you're still giving people the ability. You're not breaking their database, right? There's <laughs> that database is still going to work. It's still going to be able to perform the the task that uh, that it was meant to do. And then over time, if it makes sense, certainly you can migrate the front end with, with mm -hmm. forms. We'll show you how easy it is to make a form off this data in a second. Um, but yeah, that would be sort of down the road, but this is the first step in moving that data up to the up to the cloud. Awesome. Yeah, no, that's great. I, I love to hear kind of that flexibility that customers have with how they would want to roll this out. That's great. Yeah, I mean, rule number one is don't break my database, right? <laughs> yes, <laughs> so, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, we'll leave you with a perfectly functioning uh, access database with just a lot more functional data. You can think of it that way. Um, so just to cover the last couple, and we'll actually get to the, the export here. Um, just a quick uh, checkbox here. This will actually take you to the environment where your data has been exported uh, when you're done. I've already got that page open, so I'm going to deselect it. And then finally, uh, just a you know little detail here. When we, if you're familiar again with Power Platform and, and Dataverse, every entity has a, a name, primary name column, um, so we can set which field from our, our source data is going to be that primary name column in Dataverse. But that's all I really have to enter in terms of. Uh, you know, parameters and things, all I have to know really to, to do this export. Which tables do I want to export? What's the environment um, URL where I need to, to export that data to? And then I have to select the primary name. And at that point, we'll do a quick validation. If there are any issues, um, it'll come back and it'll tell you here. Um, and then that's, that's pretty much it. I'm going to click OK. OK, awesome. So there we are. So the export's taken place. We've built the table in Dataverse. We've exported the data. Uh, it's up there. We'll go look at it in a second. But um, before we do that, I wanted to just point out, you know, you may have noticed over here on the left hand side, we've now got two locations table. And this is the result of that linking process that I talked about um, a minute ago. This is our original table. This is the data that still lives in access. But you can see that we've actually renamed that table to locations underscore local. So all of the forms and queries and reports and things that used to report uh, used to point to that local locations data now point to this table. And this table is a link table that peeks out, points out to Dataverse. So all of my queries and my forms and my reports are still based on the locations table, but now this locations table, instead of pointing to local data, 
points out the dataverse. And is that so why there's a little arrow right next to the new location table? Is that saying that it's basically linked to, in this case, Dataverse? Yep, that's correct. The access folks will recognize that right away. That means this data is not stored in the database. It's stored somewhere else, and we're just accessing it um, via via connection. Awesome. Very cool. Yeah. Um, so you know, just to look at that connection, if, we, if I go back down to, to Dataverse and do a quick refresh, remember, this is I'm looking at my custom tables in that environment. There's nothing in here. This is kind of blank. If I now refresh, we should see a table called locations. And if I drill into that table, you can see it's a custom table, right? If I drill into that table, you'll see all the fields from the mm -hmm. access database, my lat longs, my city names, my state names have all been migrated over. And then if we even take a look at the data, we should see, in fact, that we have those five, uh, those five records that were in access now in, in Power Apps. You know, one thing I like to like to show here before we go back into to access is it's great to have your data in, in, you know, out of that silo and into Dataverse for security and governance purposes. But, you know, for folks who maybe aren't super familiar with Power Platform, one of the biggest advantages of having your data now in Power Platform is that you can use it as a source for other applications. So, you know, just to give you an example, and I'm, I'm not going to talk through that. Oops, I'm not going to talk through this because I think folks have probably seen building a Canvas app before. Um, but once you've put that data into Dataverse, it is incredibly rapid to create an application. So I'm just going to go out and connect to that locations table that we just created. I'm going to let it build me a, a quick app. Um, I'm going to make two adjustments here. Again, I'm not going to talk through all the adjustments that I'm making here, but I'll make two quick adjustments um, to the application template that it, that it gave me. Um, and now, you know, that quickly, it's not a pretty app, but <laughs> I've now got a mobile app that lists all that data that was just in Microsoft Access. And if I want to see more information about Wisconsin Dells, I can click down on that. If I want to edit the south longitude data for, you know, for Wisconsin Dells, it said longitude 999. I'm not sure if that's even the valid, valid longitude but I can update that data. It's completely live now in this application. And sure enough, if I, you know, if I go back and look at Wisconsin Dells now, um, you should see my, my longitude south is 999, right? So my brand new power app is updating Dataverse. But just as importantly, if I go back to my access database and I do a quick refresh, if I do a quick refresh of my data, you'll see that that data has also passed down to here. So if I look at Wisconsin Dells and my lat s, um, my lat S field, whoops, you can see here that it's, it's updated with 999. So this is bi-directional, right? I can write now to Dataverse from my Power App. I can still continue to write from Access, um, and all that data is going to flow back and forth uh, automatically. Does that make sense? It is. No, this is awesome. And, and I think that this answers a lot of things because oftentimes customers will say, well, we can absolutely migrate to this new technology, but there is going to be some investment. So why is it worth doing that? And I think you've shown a couple of things here. One, it's super easy to do this. It, it basically just works, right? You go through a quick little wizard, you can automatically migrate it into Dataverse. But I think the other thing that you've highlighted here as well is that once it's there, you no longer have, A, your data just locally stored on your desktop. So if your machine went into flames, you would have it recovered in the cloud in this case. Um, but additionally, then you can extend that with something like Power Apps or Power Automate or a lot of the other things that give you all these awesome features inside of the Power Platform now. Yep, and that's really the two sides of the coin, right? There's the, you know, why would you want to do this? The, the one answer is around security and governance. Governance. You've got data living out on people's desktops and on network drives, and you know, we're maybe not sure where all of those databases are and, and who's looking at it, looking at them. This is a great story for security, again, to get that data into a more securable, more visible um, environment. But again, like you said, the second side of that coin is all about using that data, you know, to, to, to make yourself more efficient, more productive. Instead of having that data trapped now on a desktop, you've now got it in Dataverse if you need to use that in other applications. I've been to so many customers where they say, yeah, we've got that data, but it's in this access database and we can't touch it, right? Because we don't sure. want to break it. Well, yeah. now you can use that data without breaking that that original access database. So yeah, yeah. Two, two, uh, two sides of the same coin, but both both beneficial for customers. That's awesome. No, thank you for sharing that. I, I know that our federal customers are going to be super excited, especially that this works in our government clouds as well. Yep. And um, what we'll do as well is because we are recording this before the feature actually officially launches, we yep. will put links in the show notes below. 
so that you all can get access to the public docs when they land and how you can get started with this really quickly. Well, Judd, thank you so much for taking the time to showcase this feature. We're super excited about this coming and being available to everybody, but including our federal customers as well. Yeah. And until next time, we'll chat again.